Now on KGW News. Paying tribute to fallen heroes on this Memorial Day. You know, I'm a veteran just like most of them are, but they gave more than I did. And I have to respect that. The secret behind one Oregon County's success leading the vaccination effort for kids. Plus, a runaway zebra leads police on one interesting pursuit. This is uh, getting kind of ridiculous. And later, the big events may be canceled, but parts of Portland are still decked out for this year's Rose Festival. We begin this Memorial Day with tributes from around the area for those who gave their lives in service to our country. Thanks for being with us. I'm Brittany Folkers in for Laurel. Our Mike Benner shows us how fellow veterans and others remembered the fallen today. Thank you. For this tight-knit family, there is no place they'd rather be on this Memorial Day than at the sun-drenched Willamette National Cemetery. We all served. My uncle served. My brother served. I served. My wife served. So we're all veterans. And uh, yeah, we know the meaning of Memorial Day. Memorial Day, a day to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice serving our country. For this family, that person is friend Adam Plumendor. Just wanted to come up and, and uh, I've been up here in a while, so I just wanted to come up and see his grave space. And he wasn't alone, not by a long shot. There was a steady stream of people coming through the cemetery all afternoon, paying their respects. You can remember them anywhere, but it really kind of gives you a, a lot broader picture of what it's all about is to be here. You can see it, all these, all these flags represent someone's loved son or daughter or mother or father. Everybody deserves all the respect we can give them. A sentiment shared by Portland Fire and Rescue. The Bureau's Pipes and Drums honored those who gave the ultimate sacrifice by performing at the Portland VA Hospital. And in Beaverton, the American Legion Post 124 hosted a Memorial Day commemoration. Today isn't just an extra long weekend. It's a, it's a long weekend to remember um, you know, why we're, why we're here, why we're free. And if anybody knows that, it's that family of veterans back at Willamette National Cemetery. On a day they could have been anywhere, doing anything, they chose to be here. It's about paying respect to people that made the ultimate sacrifice. And, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Uh, we're free because of the people that are lying in this cemetery. In Southeast Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. Developing right now, the Coast Guard is searching the water off of Long Beach on the southern Washington coast. They're looking for a teenager who was reportedly swept out to sea this afternoon. The boy is 14 years old. His friend reported him missing around 2 o'clock. The Coast Guard has been looking for hours. They're using both a boat and helicopter crew to conduct a methodical search. There was another Coast Guard search earlier in the day on the northern Oregon coast. The crew was called to Rockaway Beach around 11 this morning when a woman reported she lost sight of her 37-year-old son who had been swimming in the surf. A rescue swimmer later found him in the water. Crews tried to revive him, but he did not survive. Lifeguards from AMR had to help out three people in distress at High Rocks Park in Gladstone today. Luckily, they're all okay. That's just a taste of the work they do every day during the summer to try and keep everyone safe in the Clackamas River. They're on duty from Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day. With the warmer than usual temperatures this weekend, they told us the season kicked off quickly. There's a lot of people out here. Um, there's a lot of people drinking alcohol. Alcohol and swimming uh, is never a good combo. It impairs your judgment uh, and that can impair your swimming ability in the water. Um, so don't don't mix alcohol and swimming. Their other big advice, wear a life ja jacket on the water and make sure it fits you properly. Well, the water will continue to be tempting all the way into tomorrow and throughout the week. So let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino. Matt, we're going to be getting even hotter tomorrow. Next couple of days will be the hottest days of the year, Brittany. And yes, and you know, I dip my toes into one of our area rivers this weekend. It is super cold water. Most of them are still in the 50s. So you can get hypothermic super quickly with that. So definitely be careful around the rivers. Uh, we had a beautiful day today. More on that later. We hit 88 today, but... 
As Brittany mentioned, it's going to get even warmer tomorrow. We're going to make it up to 94 tomorrow. That'll tie the record for the day. Wednesday still hot, but it's a little bit cooler, still in the 90s, but cooler and then dropping off on Thursday. So we have two really hot days surrounded by several warm days of today and yesterday being two of those. Now, what about the records? Well, we've got possible record highs. Tomorrow's record high is 94, as I mentioned. That's what I'm forecasting, so we should tie the record high for tomorrow. But also, we're going to see potentially two record warm nights where the overnight lows stay in the 60s. The uh, warmest overnight low for tomorrow is 60, and I think we only drop down to about 62. And we may do it again on Wednesday morning as well. The high Wednesday Record high is 98. That will not be in reach, thankfully, as we begin a cooling trend at that point. Uh, Brittany, coming up, we're going to talk about the rain we did not get in the month of May or April or March, and when we may get some rain going forward. Back to you. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Matt. Well, a hospital in Bend was seeing more COVID patients last week than it had the whole pandemic. They were at capacity and having to postpone procedures. Our Galen Etlin checked in today and found out the outlook is improving. St. Charles Medical Center staff in Bend are coming off another COVID wave. I don't believe anybody saw us being in this position over a year later. Debbie Robinson is the chief nursing officer. She said heading into this holiday weekend, the hospital was at capacity with both regular patients and more severe COVID cases than OHSU in Portland. We didn't do any elective surgeries or procedures this uh, weekend. Including people who, who have aggressive cancers or things that are getting delayed in their treatments. That's Dr. Nathan Ansbaugh, an emergency room physician who expected to see an influx of people this holiday weekend for other trauma and health issues. Luckily, that hasn't happened. As of Monday, more than 30 beds were again available in the St. Charles system between the ICU and acute care units. But a spike in severe COVID cases has presented a challenge. Went up uh, again last month and stayed up. Since March 1st, St. Charles has had about 500 COVID patients in the ER. It says 98% of those patients were not vaccinated or not fully vaccinated. Where is morale right now when it comes to medical staff? Because you've been through so much. They're physically and mentally tired. She worries after the holiday weekend of travel and gatherings, another spike is on the way. So for people in and traveling to Central Oregon, staff have this message. COVID-19 is preventable right now. and. And that's the biggest thing that we can all modify. What would help you do this job right now? Thank you for asking. We are not out of the woods with the pandemic. So we really want people to continue those things we've heard for months. Social distancing, wash your hands, wear your mask, get vaccinated. Galen Etlin, KGW News. So here's where the vaccination effort stands in Oregon. Nearly 52% of people 16 and older are fully vaccinated and nearly 62% have at least their first dose. Remember, once that number hits 70%, the governor says most COVID restrictions will be dropped. One county and school district are helping to drive those numbers. Benton County has vaccinated 69% of people 16 and older in the county and is now pushing to get the younger population vaccinated as well. Within just the first week, they were eligible for the shot. 45% of the 12 to 15 year olds in the county got their first dose. And this didn't happen by accident. Long before the younger kids were approved for the shots, the Corvallis School District was working with Benton County Health to put out messages about the importance of vaccination and the campaign worked. We had just piles of middle school kids going to um, Research Stadium to get vaccination um, on a specific vaccination event that was being held that day. And then the next week we had us, um, we had already been planning a specific teen vaccine event at Research Stadium. There were prizes and all kinds of fun things that were happening at the same time. Um, and about 738 um, teenagers were vaccinated that day. Research Stadium has served as a mass vaccination site for months, but the clinic will be closing June 10th. Starting tomorrow, the mass vaccination site at the Oregon Convention Center will also offer the Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine. The OCC site has stopped giving out first doses of the Pfizer vaccine since it's closing in a few weeks. Now you can still get second doses of the Pfizer vaccine until June 19th. That's whether or not you got your first dose at the OCC site.